So yeah, I'm just going to go over some basic scratching and then I'll get more advanced as the video goes on. So, you know, the first one that, that we all learn, I'll jump straight into it, is like the baby scratch. So it's just basically moving a sample or sound forward and back and creating different rhythms and patterns. And we can release it too. Uh, there's other ways that we can do this to create different pitches. Uh, by moving it like really short and quick, we can uh, get like a fast high pitch sound. Uh, by moving it long, uh, we can get a slower, deeper sound. And you can do like combos of these two movements together. So you can do like a, a short one, short fast one, and a long one. Or you could go, you know, do the opposite thing. You can go slow, uh, sorry, long, and then short. Um, you can do like scribbles, so it's basically you're doing a baby scratch, but you're just like doing that a couple of times, but close together. The way I achieve that sound is by like kind of flicking my wrist like this. So you can combine that with like some regular baby scratches. Yeah, that's also known as uh, the Joe Cooley scratch. There's a guy from, uh, I think it was LA or somewhere, he, he come up with that pattern and his DJ name was Joe Cooley. Um, yeah, a little bit of history there for you. Okay, so, um, you know, as a progression from the baby scratch, we can use a crossfader. And I'm just going to jump straight into the chirps. Basically, what a chirp is, it's, um, like, it's like a more defined baby scratch. Yeah, so you do a baby scratch. And if we apply the fader to it, it just, like, makes it more sharper and it just makes it more clean. You hear the difference? Without, with. Yeah, it just like cleans it up a little bit. So how we do this, we start with the fader open. As we move the record forward, we uh, quickly turn off the fader. Like that. And as we open it, as we open the fader, we pull the record back to its original point. Yeah, so I'll do it again. Yeah, so that's your chirp scratch. Basically what transforming is, is just chopping the sound into little pieces. So, we need to have the sound moving, the record, the platter moving and the sound on. So we release the sound, grab it and pull it back. Yeah. Now if we uh, add some fader clicks with this, we can get a more of a stuttered sound. So it sounds like this. Yeah. Now that was just forward. If I pull the record back and uh, keep clicking on the fader, I get a different sound. The way I'm doing that on the fader is I'm using my thumb as a spring and I'm just like tapping with my middle finger like this. 
Another way of doing it is like actually pinching the fader with your finger and thumb and just like kind of moving your wrist like this in this motion. I kind of like have my hand and, and wrist in this position, yeah, rather than like that. It can be done like that, but it's, you get more movement this way, it's a bit more uh, cleaner that way. Quite similar to the transform, but we're using all of our fingers on the fader, yeah? So, like the transform, we used our thumb as a spring and just tap with our middle finger. With a crab, we can use all four of our fingers by snapping them individually against a fader from your little finger all the way to your pointer finger so you get like this motion so you could do it with four clicks or three clicks or you could do it with two when it's done with two it's, it's actually called a twiddle I'm going to show you with four clicks Also, I'm just like moving the record forward and back every time I brush my fingers against the crossfader and with the record. Yep, and then on the way back. Yep, so that's a crab scratch. That takes a little bit of practice, but if you just like, you know, if you have access to, you know, a mixer or anything with a switch, <coughs> excuse me, and you just like do that for a little while, you know, 10 minutes a day or something, your fingers and your, your hands will get used to, to that motion, you know, and then you can apply that to your, you know, to your vinyl manipulation and create that sound. Crab scratch. We can do some um, scratches that don't really need the fader, but we can achieve a similar sound. So, like the transformer scratch, where we release a record and we we, we tap the fader a couple of times. We can do that exact uh, same sound but without using the fader, just by using our hand and stopping the record in, in certain parts by releasing it and just catching it. Yeah. These are called bubble taps or taps. Let's try that again. You can put like different pauses. And you can create on different patterns and rhythms with it and create like different sounds. You can also do a technique called a snake, which is quite similar. Uh, how we do this, we use our finger and thumb. We hold it like this and it's like we're drawing on the record kind of thing. It's a little bit different from the, the bubble tap. It's more of a, you know, more of a stuttered sound. It looks cool though. <laughs> but yeah, so basically just like doing this on the record, I don't apply too much pressure. Um, just enough to let the record uh, glide against my finger and thumb. So I'll do it again. Another technique that we can do is called a drill scratch. And basically that is just a really fast baby scratch. And using a very small part of the record, so like maybe that much. And basically what you do, you just like tense, you know, the, your fingers and your forearm 
and you're just moving the, the record forward and back, but really quick. And, you know, if you have a mixer with a filter on it, you can get some cool sounds by moving the filter to the high pass and the low pass. So it sounds like this. I'll do it with a high pass. Now with the low pass. You can even do it with the volumes too. Fade it in and out. 